Hello my lovelies and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's video. My name is Ali and I'm so glad you stopped by. So today we're discussing um, alcoholism and its impact on the eye. So we all know about the short term blurry vision or red eye or, you know, hangover type consequences on the eye, which are all very temporary and generally speaking do go away. But I have been applying for a certificate for serving alcohol um, and selling alcohol um, with, in line with my charity work um, and the bistro that we've opened. And ever since I applied for the course, I, um, I've been just thinking about one particular patient um, who has a very severe issue with alcohol and has had very dramatic consequences with his health um, and specifically with his eyes, actually, more than anything else. And I keep on thinking of him. Um, he's not alone. He's just extremely lovely and he's, uh, we see him often and I've come to really worry about him because, you know, these wonderful patients, they make it into your heart no matter how strong and thick-skinned you think you might be. Um, so I always sort of think back to, I wonder what I would do if somebody that I knew to be an alcoholic was to walk into my place of business and how I would um, attend to that person fairly without discrimination but at the same time give them the amount of care and guidance I guess that I can possibly do without overstepping so it's a very delicate space so I thought what I might do is just very very briefly speak about the consequences on the eye especially in this particular gentleman's case but also in general um, and yeah hope you guys enjoy today's little chatty video So as always, there's a prompt that leads me to the topic of the week. Um, and this week's prompt was because a little bit later in the week, um, probably on the same day that this is going to go out, I'm actually going to be continuing my education um, in order to gain a license to serve alcohol. So um, with all my bistro work, for those of you who have been following me recently, there's lots of new skills and tricks to learn. But I never forget about my orthoptic background and how much um, study I did back then for that and the thing that springs to mind is a particular patient who is super lovely who is such just such a genuine and kind person but unfortunately he has this illness um, and he is definitely an over consumer of alcohol and some other things um, but primarily alcohol and we have done our best to encourage him to stop and we've spoken I've spoken to him the doctor I work for has had a few chats here and there you can't overstep too much when you're an eye clinician but as you get to know people especially when they're your patients you just can't help but feel that you just need to do as much as you can in a limited space and with a limited time um, for these people so that they have the best chance to do well with their eye health but it's never really eye health is it it's always health in general so with him in mind I'll be telling you a little bit about alcoholic effects or alcohol's effects on the eyes when overconsumed. Now, bear in mind, I am someone who definitely enjoys an occasional drink, um, especially if there's a good reason, celebration, someone's birthday, it's just a really, really nice bottle of red. Um, that's very much up my alley. Um, so I am by no means saying don't drink. What I'm talking about is when it's a regular intoxication in fact even you would, wouldn't believe it but even one over intoxication can have a severe consequence on your eyesight permanently so if you're very unlucky you don't hear of it much because you'd have to really truly be unlucky but it definitely can theoretically happen as we know alcohol itself can blur your vision can stop the pupils which are muscular um, to, from reacting to light and dark properly, which decreases our contrast sensitivity. And it definitely will slur not just our words, but also our judgment of images in front of us because we just aren't seeing them as clearly. Um, and the reason for that is because when there's too much light or too little light coming into our eyes, it just creates haze. Um, and that haze is unfortunately very impactful um, to judging things like distances colors, uh, saturations, etc. Um, it just means that the environment around us suddenly becomes an obstacle when previously we were fully sighted and it was quite easy to maneuver. Um, and this is without taking into account that your feet aren't listening to you either at this point. But more permanently, 
you get this um, vision loss, or relative vision loss. It typically happens because of the effect that the liver can have on the eyes. So what can definitely become affected is your optic nerve. The optic nerve is, as we have known, have heard from previous videos, is the messenger that takes the part of the eye or part of the system that does the looking, so the actual eyeball itself, to the part of the eye that does the seeing, which is of course the brain. And that can be hindered quite severely when alcohol is toxifying our system. Now when I think back to this particular patient, definitely some very severe things have happened to him with his eyes because of his alcoholism. One is he's become um, quite pronounced, his eyeballs have become quite pronounced or proptosed. And because they have become quite severely protruding, not severely, but moderately, let's call it protruding, it's led to his lower lids flipping outwards. Definitely when you're drinking, you're not hydrating, you're inebriating. <laughs> so you're going to have things like um, malnutrition happen because the calories are coming from the alcohol rather than from nutritious food. You're also going to get a lot of dry eye. Um, and that can also lead to these lid issues. He then had three surgeries to correct that problem. Um, the first one didn't even take because his skin wasn't able to heal um, in the proper manner. Skin would and it recurred and recurrences happen for many reasons but in his case it was genuinely a healing issue. Um, and then when we went to the other eye the doctor was much more drastic um, because she knew that chances are it wouldn't hold either. Um, so she made her amendments when she went and did the other eye when it eventually also flipped open. But between surgery one and two, sorry, two and three rather, for his eyelids, which is really tragic. It took him a really long time to commit to the surgery. He had to be sober enough. He's such a lovely man. He's literally said, can you keep me overnight? Otherwise I will drink. Can you just look after me? And we organized it. So it took a really long time just to organize for him. Um, and then when he finally did have um, the first lot of surgery, his, the poor thing, he had a severe bleed in his eye, in the other eye, not the one that was operated on. And he went blind in that eye. He had a retinal detachment due to a bleed in two spots in his eye, so beyond reprieve from laser. Um, and he had to have the eye surgically corrected. His vision has never recovered, but it's certainly better than it was the day I saw him. He came in a bit of an emergency saying, oh, you know, can't really see from that eye. And he's just so mild, this man, he doesn't ever complain. So oh, I just can't see. I'm like, oh, no, okay, let's have a look. He couldn't see the letters on the chart and went, oh boy, this is going to be bad. I popped him on to do some retinal photos and of course all I could see was these big balloons of blood. So poor man's been through surgery and then after that the second eyelid went, so we fixed the second eyelid. I mean he's just been through the wars and it's all because he has been a lifetime drinker. One of the most common things that happen to alcoholics is retinopathy. Eventually over time what happens is the blood vessels of the eye do not cope and they start to pop and bleed. Kind of like what happens in diabetes, but it's not 100% the same, but it's extremely similar. Um, you end up with these fluid spots. They gather up underneath the macula that disrupt the vision. Sometimes they happen off the macula and don't disrupt the vision, but then lead to <laughs> retinal detachment, like with my friend, um, the most beautiful patient who I absolutely just have so much respect for because he's so honest about his problem and tries so hard to battle it and just can, can't seem to win um, his little battles that he keeps going through and it's it just sucks for him it really does really upset me when you know he's off the drink for you know he'll come in and say oh, I haven't had a drink in a whole week and he's so excited and so proud of himself and he's, he's speaking differently and um, you know he's got energy and all this sort of stuff and then the next time I see him he goes oh no you know I have to tell you I'm on the drink again or he usually says the drink the drink has me again so Unfortunately, these addictions are driven by things much deeper than I can professionally comment on. Um, and for, for people like this particular gentleman, I can't feel, I can't help but feel extremely helpless. So all we do is we do our best to make his eyes as healthy and as long lasting and comfortable as we can. Um, we definitely have, you know, said to him, please, you know, do this and that and have, we've given him charts to check his vision on and things like that because we assumed he would have a bleed sooner or later. Um, but unfortunately, in his case, he just had this big old um, eruption at the back of his eye and there was no opportunity to do anything benign like laser. Um, he had to go straight into surgery. 
Um, and this happens all the time to people who have really severe diabetes, for example. So no matter what they do with their diet um, or with their what their uh, professionals do with their medication, unfortunately the eyes just do not comply. And what happens there is it's probably due to inflammation rather than actual vessel growth. But we get all these brand new vessels. Um, and that's happening because the old vessels are just not doing their job. So the body's response to that is, okay, there's not enough supply, so I'll grow some new vessels for new supply. But unfortunately, new vessels don't belong there. The vessels that we have, we should have had already from birth. So when the new vessels grow, they're not the same structurally and they pop and bleed. And when they pop and bleed, it can be like my friend who <laughs> had this giant eruption, or sometimes they're a slow process, in which case we have wonderful medications that stop the growth of these vessels, or at least they're leaking. Um, we also have lasers that can cauterize these um, new vessels or burn them off um, in order to stop them from being active. Um, unfortunately, that usually leads to other vessel growth, but at least it's a way to maintain it, at least for some period of time. Um, and of course, we always correspond with other professionals to see what we can do with someone's medication, diet, lifestyle, connect them to other specialists to give them the best chance. Not just their eyes, but their whole body. Because you have to remember that whatever's happening in the eyes is probably happening in your fingertips, it's happening on your major organs, it's happening in the brain. So the eyes are just easy to see, it's easy to assess an eye. Um, it's a matter of taking a few photographs, whereas with the rest of the body it's a lot more complicated and, and hidden and so forth. So the wonderful opportunity that we have as eye specialists is to make that observation for the patient. So I guess the message is, as I started, that it's okay to have a drink. It's okay to enjoy a really good red or, or white, whatever you like, whatever you fancy. Um, it's okay to have, you know, a good time with your mates or have a, a nice evening, you know, family dinner or go out to a bar or go out to an event and have, you know, and be merry. There's nothing wrong with that but it has to be all about the moderation. Um, just recently as well, a friend of mine, um, her, one of her best friends, um, had to have a massive open heart surgery and he's just young and he's otherwise healthy, but he just wasn't feeling himself and he was very lucky that he got to a good cardiologist really quickly and was able to be repaired, so to speak, in a very timely manner. But when these things start to happen, it can sometimes affect the eye, sure, but it's more than that. You could lose your sight, but you won't lose your life. Um, a lot of these diseases, unfortunately, they're also life-threatening. They're not just sight-threatening or quality of life-threatening. So if you can enjoy food or beverage or alcohol in moderation, that's the best way to do it. And if you're someone who finds themselves constantly overindulging, you might need to pose the question. You may not be an alcoholic. You may not be an addict. But if you're unable to control your portions, um, there is so much wonderful help out there um, and you should never in a million years feel embarrassed to ask for help. If you had a broken arm, you would see a surgeon. If you had um, a chipped tooth, you would see a dentist. If you needed glasses, you would see an optometrist. If you needed your eyes attended to, you would see an ophthalmologist. So if you need some behavioral help, you need to see someone who specializes in that area, whether that's an OT or a psychologist, or sometimes it does need to be a psychiatrist. I, you know, that, that, that's, that's not, a, not a problem. Um, you need to have a good general practitioner, a good family doctor that can guide you in the right way so that your overall health can be protected for a very long and healthy life. Okay, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed today's little story time um, video. I, um, I've been thinking about this license ever since I did my responsible service certificate um, because in my eye work, I see the consequences of people having too much access to things and being too able to um, indulge their illnesses. And then in my public work, in my charity work, I see um, the consequences of people abusing different things. Uh, so alcohol, drugs, whatever it is, and the effect it has on the people that they love um, and how toxic that can be the people around them. Um, and then the other side of my charity work or just even everyday life is the fact that most of us um, don't need help in that department, can be responsible, but it takes even for the most responsible patron of a restaurant or a seller, seller or a um, just the liquor store, it takes the salesperson to not just have a certificate because it's mandatory to have one to sell stuff, 
but to actually use common sense and judgment on who your customer is and how that's going to impact their world and your society in general. If you know that you have a regular flyer that, you know, frequent flyer, if you will, that constantly purchases way too much, um, you know, have a chat open a conversation with this person you know they're your customer there's nothing wrong with chatting with your customer get to know them and see if you can't just say something very 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 gentle without prying without getting up in their business um, just to kind of signal them to understand that perhaps what they're doing isn't right or the other way around maybe <laughs> maybe they could be coming more often and they could be a more regular customer whatever the case might be but don't forget that when you're someone who is involved in someone's life whether you're you know the checkout at their grocery store whether you're their doctor whether you're just their mate if you know something about someone don't ever be afraid to speak up I mean do it with the most respect and in the most gentle way of course but I feel like we have forgotten how to uphold each other and how to support each other in the right way so wherever you are in the world, guys, I do hope that this is not an issue that you're ongoingly dealing with, but I just felt like it was important to just discuss it briefly um, on this platform. If you like this video or you want to hear more informative videos about eyes, um, I highly recommend you check out the channel and leave me a like and definitely subscribe. For more things on Ida's creation, the big world <laughs> of everything that we do, head over to Instagram or Facebook and see other things that are going on in my little world. And wherever you are, I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and happy. And I can wait to see you on the next one. Bye.